Welcome to this video, which documents a robotic left-sided excision of a bronchogenic cyst with sutured repair. This was done at James Cook University Hospital by Mr. Joel Dunning. We have no conflicts of interest to declare. This patient is a 35-year-old lady that had reported experiencing an intermittent and really productive cuff for several years. It was very offensive and troublesome in nature. She also reported intermittent chest infections over the years. This is her CT scan, and we've stopped at her bronchogenic cyst, which is just where the trachea bifurcates into the left and right main bronchi. And this is her preoperative bronchoscopy, where just a couple of centimeters distal to the carina on the left, there's a tiny hole just at about two o'clock. If we gave a bit of positive pressure ventilation, that opened up. And this was the real trouble, because there is a big cyst behind this, and this cyst closes up and opens again, and fills full of offensive productive sputum that she then coughs up intermittently. We used a standardized Cefolia 5 port technique. Here's an image of our port placement. One difference we made in this operation is that we put the 5mm thoracic grasper, which is shown on the left, anteriorly rather than posteriorly. And then our camera was a little bit more posteriorly. In the right hand is the Maryland, which has bipolar energy. And in the left is the Cartier forceps, which is a very soft tip forceps. We also always use a swab in the chest for safety and also for cleaning any small amounts of blood. Actually, we were dissecting the inferior pulmonary ligament and we went up past the pulmonary vein. Here, the left pulmonary artery is shown. You can also see here us grasping the vagus nerve gently to preserve it and you can also see some of the pulmonary branches of the vagus nerve just below the carrie. These are all divided and the vagus was retracted posteriorly. We then proceeded to dissect down the left main bronchus. This is now demonstrating the cyst sac. The cyst was interestingly collapsed because obviously it had a connection to the airways and the airways were under negative pressure because we were on one lung ventilation with some suction. We initially used the Maryland to dissect. Here you can even see the opposite right main bronchus. Then we changed to scissors so we can get a fresh relatively non diathermied edges on the bronchus to minimize damage to the bronchus. Also opening up the cyst allowed us to see how deeply it spread for. We carefully washed out the cyst to minimize contamination of the operative field, although it was actually quite clean in there at the time. We could see the small hole in the membranous portion of the left main bronchus, which looked very similar to the preoperative bronchoscopic view. This is the robotic scissors performing the last part of the excision. And you can see inside there is a relatively clean cystic cavity. This was then sent for histology, which I imagine will show a bronchogenic cyst. We mobilized a small amount of mediastinal tissue to place over the hole. Initially, we were thinking of putting a big pericardial patch over it. Although because the hole ended up looking so small, we thought it'd be better to minimize the amount of prosthetic material in the chest, and instead, we used a piece of mediastinal tissue and a single 4-0 vicral suture. Here, two stitches were made into the membranous part of the bronchus, and then stitched over the defect. This vicral will be hopefully absorbed completely in two months. We also felt it would be safer to apply a small amount of Eversil glue over the wound as well. And then finally, we finished up with a drain. We did a long line of intercostal blocks at the start as well, and a phrenic nerve block, but we did not leave an extra pleural catheter in this particular case. At the end of the case, we gently inflated the lungs with a 20 centimeter of water pressure and the lung inflated fully. This completes the cyst excision. The patient should recover from this procedure very rapidly with minimal post-operative pain. Thank you very much for watching and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions.